go. Welcome back to another episode of Retro Rewire. We're outside, we're out in the field, never mind the noise from the traffic, but we're gonna be going into another hard off and we're gonna check out some of the good things that they have in stock. Now, right away when you get here, you're gonna see that they have quite a bit of discounted dollar games or 100 yen, but the real good stuff is inside, so let's go ahead and check it out. Now, as always, we wanna sanitize in this COVID world, but we're definitely gonna check out the case. And then after the case, we're gonna go right into the game aisle. And as you can see, they have quite a bit of things in stock. And then we're gonna make our way down over here. We're gonna head to one of my favorite sections, which is the junk section. And as you can see here, they have a ton of games in this section. Not only that, but they have a number of consoles, consoles like this PlayStation 1 that has the RCA jacks. And as you can see here, it says that it powers on. So there's a good chance that this guy works and it's only 100 yen. So that's an amazing deal. And there's one more thing that I wanna show you guys. Let's go ahead and go down this way, which is gonna be the figures. Now, I definitely like, like to collect these figures and have them as room decor. I'm pretty much at my limit, but I still like to show you guys these kinds of things. And we'll definitely check a few of those out. But anyhow, stay tuned and let's go ahead and enjoy the hard off in Kazuo Saitama. All right, y'all, so we're gonna start with the junk section here. And as you can see right away, we have a number of consoles, uh, a couple PS3s, PS2s, and uh, quite a bit of 360s. Now this particular hard off in Kazo Saitama does have a testing station so you can test these, uh, these consoles out. And this here is of particular of interest, this uh, keyboard for the Famicom for 20 bucks. I'm not sure if it works, but based off the condition, you know, it may work. And then we have a number of PlayStation 1s which were priced at a dollar. And you know, we're just going to take a quick glance at some of the consoles that they had. And as I mentioned, they did have a testing station. They have all the cables and the controllers that you need, a couple uh, loose games so you can test them out. And then here we have another about four foot section of uh, junk items. And at the top we have a boxed uh, Sega Saturn arcade stick, which actually isn't very good. But uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of your standard things that you would expect to find in the junk section, a number of controllers, accessories, handheld systems, and chargers of course, tons and tons of chargers. And then we even had another arcade stick, this one here for the Dreamcast priced at 50. So it's a little bit high price there. But here we have like the junk games. Um, and mainly what you're gonna see in these junk, uh, in this junk section is just gonna be a lot of common games. You're not gonna find anything rare nowadays if, if you ever could, I'm not, you know, but you know, every now and then you might see a, like an uncommon game, but a lot of the stuff that you're gonna really end up seeing is like stuff like Fantasy Star and Dynasty Warriors and you know a few other games i still look through this section because every now and then there are a few games that that i that i don't have that i would like to own like uh I, I found devil may cry here for about 50 cents and you know it was in freaking almost like new condition you know we have this Bray fencer which was also in awesome condition and then here we have like the loose cards and even through you know in this section it's just a, more of the same thing you know you're gonna find a lot of common games but you know, like your Mario Karts, your Super Mario Worlds, your Donkey Kong Countries, th those are all gonna be here. I picked up Street Fighter 2, the vanilla version for about 50 cents as well. And then of course we have N64, which you're gonna find all like the major Nintendo titles here in this junk section. So if you're on the lookout for those, you know, definitely keep a lookout through the junk section. But here we have the action figures. You know, this is a section that I do like to look through because I like to, kind of um, line up my room with these figures but as I mentioned earlier in this video I'm pretty much at capacity so you know I have to be really selective on what I pick up in the in the future but a lot of the you know a lot of these used figures are in awesome condition and most of them will include a box and you'll even find some cool things like this xenomorph just kind of hanging out this was about 70 bucks and it's over a foot tall definitely uh, detailed and a little bit tempting you know but for 70 bucks uh, i had other priorities in mind while i was here shopping but you know we have another end cap here of more figures and at the bottom the one that really stands out is this uh guts from the the famous uh berserk series may kentaro miura rest in peace recently passed away but man that thing looks freaking awesome 
and at 20 bucks. But anyhow, let's go down to the main event here. We're gonna take a look at the display case and I just wanna give a big thank you to the, to the manager and staff at the um, Kazo Saitama uh, hard off here as they were, you know, they let me film and they even opened up the case. So we're gonna take a closer look at what they have, all the goodies that they have inside. And like the first three shelves, as you just saw, is just gonna be loaded with like Nintendo handheld systems, you know, from the latest stuff like the Switch Lite to their legacy systems like uh, the DS, the Game Boy Advance. I don't think they had any Game Boy Colors in here, but definitely a lot of uh, variants of the 3DS. And while I was here, I actually did end up uh, picking up a Nintendo 3DS. I got the vanilla version and I paid about uh, 40 bucks for it. It was the white model. And I was definitely happy with that purchase. They had quite a bit of them as you can see here out in the back. They had a, a few new 3DS's, which that black one looks freaking awesome. And we'll take a closer look at one of these consoles here uh, as uh, after I skim over this area so you guys can kind of see everything that they have in stock. And that teal looking uh, 3DS is pretty mean looking for 30 bucks. But anyhow, let's take a closer look at a DSi limited edition, this Pokemon Black. This was priced at about 30 bucks. And as you can see, the condition is pretty good. A little dusty but that ain't no thing it's probably been sitting there for quite some time and then here's a closer look at the new 3ds the the black model version for 80 bucks definitely mean looking that thing but anyhow let's go ahead and take a look at some games and as you can see here we have uh, turtles in time actually two copies for 45 bucks uh, a piece freaking classic game for the Super Famicom and then behind that I'm not sure what this is this Nitro something but I'm pretty sure it's like a platforming game that was inspired by Sonic as many games uh, back in the 90s were the mass the animal mascot with some tood but then we have a zigzag cat here never actually heard of this but it looks kind of interesting if you know what some of these games are I don't I definitely don't know or, or haven't played a few of these but if you do know leave a comment down below so we can, uh, you know, we have Metal Max uh, Returns. This was also, uh, I believe, a, a Famicom game originally. But we'll just uh, kind of skim over more of these games. We have GoldenEye there for the N64 for 25 bucks. And I'm not sure what this game is here, but it's priced at 180 bucks. Definitely expensive game here. And then we have a boxed uh, Castlevania Adventure for 25 bucks. Now that little sticker there says that it has some kind of stain on it. But looking at the box, it looks like in freaking awesome condition. And then 200 bucks for a Kiki Kai Kai for the Game Boy Advance, otherwise known as uh, Pocky and Rocky. And then we have King of Fighters Round R for the Neo Geo Pocket. But 200 bucks, man, for that Kiki Kai Kai. Super expensive and definitely keep a lookout for the remake that's coming out on the Nintendo Switch. And then we have Devil's Crush here for about 50 bucks. And we're just going to kind of take a, a quick glance at some of these games. We have Super Mario Bros. 3 for 15 And considering when this was released in, uh, I believe, 88, I mean, look at the condition of that box. We have Lang Grazer, Grazer for 30 bucks for the Mega Drive here. This is the sequel. This is a, a RPG series that, you know, still has uh, games produced under, under it under its banner and then we have this game here that has like the Akira artwork vibe never actually seen this before but it's a Konami RPG and then we have uh, War of the Gems Marvel Super Heroes for the Super Famicom for 90 and then we have Dragon's Magic also known as Dragon's Lair more commonly known as Dragon's Lair and I actually have this for the Super Nintendo it's not actually a very good game but you know if you're into the into the franchise you know by all means uh, give it a go and then we'll take a look at the side here. Not sure what these games are, but the one on the far right there is Sin and Punishment. 20 bucks for the N64. Freaking awesome game, and I definitely like the sequel Star Successor on the Wii. Now, I'm not sure what this is, but again, you know, Famicom game, 15 bucks, and the condition is pretty awesome. This is uh, by Technos. And it has that double dragon looking uh, artwork, but it, more like of a Goemon type of a gameplay by based off those screenshots. And then we have a couple PC Engine games here. We have um, Adventure Island for 30, Art Type 2 there for 15, and then a couple others. And then right here in the corner, we have Biohazard Gaiden. 
Never actually played this one, but from my understanding, you're on a ship and you play as Leon Kennedy. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's canon, but definitely would like to play that one day. But 50 bucks there. And then, you know, definitely feel free to pause. I'm just going to skim over some of these games. But let's start with a few more Famicom games. They had quite a bit of them. And then we have this Wanpaku Graffiti Splatterhouse, which is also available on the Nintendo Switch as a part of the Namco collection, and that's 20 bucks. The, the loose cart there was 30, so, you know, you could uh, make that choice what's more valuable to you. And then it was kind of nice to see Contra here for the Famicom. This is uh, priced at 40 bucks. And this is another one that's a part of a Switch collection, the Contra Anniversary Collection, which is also getting a physical release by Limited Run Games. And then we'll just kind of um, glance through a few of the games here. There's Metal Max, the original. Uh, but yeah, kind of a lot of... Definitely cool to just kind of browse through this like this, you know? But then we have Adventure Island 3. Never actually played this one, but it's got to be good. Adventure Island, you, Adventure Island, you know? And then we have DuckTales 2 for 70 bucks. Look at that freaking cover. You're in for an adventure just by looking at that. And then we have R-Type Delta for 65. Never actually played this one, but I definitely would like to give it a go back pretty soon. And then we have Castle Castlevania 3 for 40 bucks. That's a freaking awesome cover. And then we have Dead Dance. Not sure what this is, a Jellico fighting game. I was thinking that it was power moves, but it's not. So I'm not even sure if that was released in the States. And then we have Super Mario USA with its awesome pink box. Freaking fun game, classic game. And then we have like this Dynasty Warriors type game from Namcot. And then Tiny Toon Adventures 2 for 20 bucks complete in the box. Or in the box, I'm not sure if it has the manual, but looks freaking awesome. Not sure what this is, but we have Metroid Fusion for 25. Metroid Dread is coming soon. And then we have this Sega My Card Mark 3. Now this is from what, 85, 86, and look at the condition of this game. And then we have Thunder Fox. This is also a part of the Taito collection for uh, PS2. Never actually played it, but definitely would like to give it a go. And then we have the Circus Mystery for the Mega Drive. Never actually seen this for the Mega Drive, not even in the States, but uh, kind of cool that they have that. And then we have a Lest. And then we're going to end things with the Neo Geo games that they have in stock. A lot of the common stuff, you know, that you'll see here. But anyhow, this wraps up part one. In part two, we're going to take a look at the game aisle. And as you can see, it's fairly large and they had quite a bit of stuff in stock. And I'll try to get that out within a week uh, after this video. But anyhow, thank you for checking out Retro Rewire. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.